So endocarditis. Endocarditis basically always affects the valves. So anything that's growing on the valves, fungi, bacteria, virus. So um, patients years ago that had rheumatic fever, they got an infection, rheumatic fever, I don't know why they called it that, but basically it's attacking the valves. These patients then had rheumatic fever, they got valve problems the rest of their life. If you've got any valve problem, whether congenital or having a disease, you are at a high risk of having stuff grow on it. So that is endocarditis. So pre-existing valve disease like rheumatic fever, prior endocarditis, IV drug users, these patients are at high risk for endocarditis. So it's usually acute, it's staph aureus. That's an acute one. High fever, signs of heart failure, WBC. Subacute, not uh, could be a low grade fever. The number one way to diagnose, other than the symptoms, doesn't look like they have heart failure, but they have symptoms as if they did. Having a spike fever, you shouldn't be running a spike fever with Staph aureus, and if it looks like heart failure, so cultures. Cultures, 30 minutes apart, two of them, 90% of patients become positive, they figure it out, it's endocarditis. Remember, always give blood cultures, do those before you give antibiotics. So, um, because it's an infection, if it's bacterial growing something, you would have elevated WBCs, ESR, C-reactive protein. The bad thing about endocarditis is the vegetation grow, it splits off. So all that growing vegetation on your valve breaks off, goes through your bloodstream, and it embolizes. So embolization of your um, vegetation. And those show up as little petechiae or hemorrhages. So it could be splinter hemorrhages that show up in your fingernails, fingertips or toes. Those are called Osler nodes. Um, there's some that show up on the palms and soles of your feet. That's Jane Way's lesions. Some that grow that show up in your eyes. Those are called Roth spots. They go into your joints and cause joint pain. Um, the ones that end up in your fingernails are called the splinter hemorrhages. So when this starts breaking off, that's other another sign that says, "Oh, we've got endocarditis here." Dysrhythmias, atrial fib and atrial flutter can be present because of the attack on the valves. Rheumatic fever used to be the major cause. Now it's less than 20%, not a lot. Fungal infestations respond poorly to antifungal meds. So patients with, an, with a fungal infection on their valve are going to be taking antifungals for a long period of time, months usually. So effectiveness of antibiotics, they keep doing blood cultures. When the blood cultures don't grow anything out, then we know we have killed the organism that's doing the damage. Um, arthralgias are common. Those should go away as well. Here's a picture of Osler's on the thumb. So any new, if you have a patient that's never had a murmur and now they have a S3 mitral valve sound, that could be a sign of endocarditis. Heart failure in 80% of patients with aortic valve problems, 50% mitral valve endocarditis. So heart failure is going to happen with patients that have 80% of aortic valve problems, 50% of mitral valve endocarditis. So endocarditis on the aortic, mitral valve, 80%, 50% go into heart failure. That was a roundabout way of explaining that. Sorry about that. TEEs can look at the valves we talked about. Endocardio, echocardiogram can look at the vegetation. Can you see it? Patients sometimes develop cardiomegaly. So risk for endocarditis. Well, if you've got a prosthetic heart valve, there you go. If you've got a previous history of endocarditis, if you've got scarred valves already caused by rheumatic fever, that's a common one. If you've got a congenital heart defect, if you've got hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, if you are getting your teeth cleaned and you've got a history of rheumatic fever and previous endocarditis, 
and then some other surgeries you're at risk for. So if you've ever changed or gone to a new um, dentist, when they take their assessment or they do their intake, they're going to ask you, do you have an artificial heart valve? Have you had rheumatic fever? Do you have valve problems? Have you had endocarditis? Because these people in that category should be taking antibiotics prophylactically. So if you have prosthetic, prosthetic cardiac valve, um, infectious endocarditis, all these things, you need antibiotic prophylactically. Here's a picture you can't quite see, but here are those things on your fingers, your splinter ones on your fingers, palms of the toes, everywhere.